What is up? Good morning, friends, and greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 28 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, simply standard operating procedure, because the human body is always a healing and regenerating system. It is always designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing and renewing and regenerating system a miracle, it is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, the longevity products, something you may have read or heard about on the news or from friends, we welcome your phone calls here on the Bright Side. Let us help you change your life today. Let us help you clear up any confusion about nutrition and nutritional supplementation, which can be a confusing subject. 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible, and we'll take your calls here in our second segment. 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or suggested or recommended, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, and purchase any of the products directly off the website. You can also uh, call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, and purchase products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team Start yourself a longevity business or in thank you checks associated with moving the longevity products, with sharing the longevity products. You don't really sell them. They sell themselves, especially the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Or you can just get, you can just get your products at the wholesale price if you so desire. Offer a one-time $10 fee. Call the phone team at 866-735-2470, or you can sign up right off the website, brightsideben.com, my blog, pharmacistben.com, and now criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. This is your nutrition show. We bring it all down to the basics, the simplest, the easiest, underst uh, easiest to understand and leverage concepts to get ourselves back to health or to stay healthy if uh, we're already healthy. One of the simplest concepts to take advantage of and one that is, will improve pretty much any chronic long-term degenerative issue is caloric restriction. We talk about this all the time. And fasting, caloric restriction and fasting are two of the most powerful powerful anti-aging, youth-promoting, anti-cancer, and symptom-reducing strategies you could ever use. Way more effective and non-toxic and cheaper than any prescription drugs you could take. And as it turns out, one of the main reasons for the benefits of caloric restriction and fasting involve the upregulation of short fats, short-chain fatty acids. Short fats, or SCFAs, or short-chain fatty acids. These uh, fatty elements that are produced in the intestine in response to the activity of, of fiber and bacteria. SCFA benefits are associated with high fiber diets. And uh, short chain fatty acids are responsible for the generally favorable opinion and the recommendations that most nutritionally minded researchers and therapists have to include more fiber foods and more veggies in your diet. It's about the short chain, or largely anyway, about the short chain fatty acids. High fiber diets and the subsequent production of these SCFAs are associated with weight loss and uh, better sugar control if you're a diabetic and the prevention of cancer too. Yesterday there was a study that was released, uh, this was on uh, Medscape, medscape.com. 
a uh, large study on Seventh-day Adventists, many of whom are vegetarians. This was a study on 96,000 participants. That's a big study. Published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, researchers found that those who consumed a veggie diet had a 22% lower risk for colon cancer than meat eaters. And this is right in line with the general anti-cancer benefits associated with fiber and, for that matter, with these short-chain fatty acids. Short chain fats and fiber have also been linked to improvements in immune system functioning, including benefits for allergy sufferers. Springtime's almost here, and with it comes allergy season. If you're one of the many millions of uh, millions of Americans, some 15 million Americans are dealing with springtime allergies. Every deal with springtime allergies every year. If you're one of the millions, you know, who's going to be dealing with runny noses and sneezing and teary eyes and all the things that allergies can induce. You may want to think about including some more salads and fermented vegetables and probiotics into your diet this year. Yesterday, Fox News ran a story about several studies, including one that was published in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. All of these studies found that more fiber means more short-chain fatty acids, and more short-chain fatty acids improves the immune response to allergens. This should come as no surprise to regular listeners of The Bright Side. We've been talking about the relationship between digestive health and probiotics and the immune system and allergies for years. If you are dealing with springtime allergies, don't blame the pollen, friends. Blame your digestive system. Blame your lack of probiotics or lack of fiber. Yes, the digestive system is linked to the immune system, and that means uh, help for allergies. Or if you have a messed up digestion, that means a greater likelihood of allergies. Via this fiber and short chain fatty acid connection, you now know why digestive health is the most important consideration to make if you are an allergy sufferer and you don't want to have to deal with doctors or drugs or the medical model. If this is you and you're tired of allergists who do nothing for allergies. Have you ever noticed this? Your allergist does nothing for your allergies. Maybe tells you what you're allergic to and then gives you a medicine. It's all specialists are like this. The only, the only reason for specializing, the only reason for isolating specific symptoms in your body is so that there can be specialists. Specialties are for specialists. Special diseases are only for specialists. They don't help anybody. Allergists never do anything to help anybody, period. But we can help ourselves, as always. If you're tired of allergists and allergy medicine, you might want to make sure you're eating your veggies, using your biolumin nightly essence, getting lots of fiber, and making your short-chain fatty acids this allergy season. So your short fats, I'm going to call them short fats instead of short-chain fatty acids, are protective, uh, they're immune-boosting, they're anti-obesity, they're calming, and most importantly, they're anti-cancer. They keep cells from going rogue, especially colon cancer cells. They, uh, they can actually even induce the uh, destruction of rogue cancer cells as they form. This destruction of cells is called apoptosis, cell suicide. And it turns out that short-chain fatty acids induce rogue cancer cells to kill themselves, to uh, apoptosize, to commit suicide. That's a lot of benefits from fiber and probiotics like the Biolumin Nightly Essence and the Beyond Organic products. This is the best way to activate your own personal stash of anti-cancer, immune-boosting, calming, um, just overall health-promoting health short-chain fatty acids. Use, your, use uh, Biolumin Nightly Essence. Use the Beyond Organic Cheese and the Beyond Organic Amasai and Swear V, all good sources of fermented of, of probiotics, and also make sure you're getting enough fiber. By the way, if God forbid you or anyone else is, uh, anyone you know is dealing with, uh, with cancer, the appropriate solution is not necessarily to chemotherapeutically kill cancer cells. And at the end of the day, cancer cells are our cells. We've said that many times. The way to deal with cancer uh, is to make your body strong. Cancer in this way is just another breakdown in the body. Cancer, it's severe and life-threatening, obviously, but in terms of reversing it or in terms of protecting yourself from cancer, it really is just another way of taking care of the body. Nutrition, oxygenation, detoxification, all the things that induce cancer are the same things that induce every other health challenge. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification. And nowhere in that equation is your doctor involved, even though he may want to insinuate himself uh, into your health situation. All right. 
I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue when we come back from our break. Our number is 844-236-6010. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang tight. If you're on hold, we'll get to you here in just a couple of moments. I want to finish up a couple more things about short-chain fatty acids, and then we'll get your phone calls. Got a line open for you, 844-236-6010. If we've left you on hold in the past, tell our call screener and we'll get you first up. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products you hear recommended on the program, or if you want to join the Brightside Ben team and start yourself a little longevity business, you can make some spare change or you can make some significant income. A lot of folks are, are making their sole income from uh, from uh, moving the longevity products. Say, uh, you can find out all about it by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. Okay, so uh, butyric acid, short-chain fatty acids, these, these little tiny molecules that you don't hear a lot about that are made in the intestine in response to fiber and probiotics, uh, fermented foods, eating butter. Butter is a great source of uh, short-chain fatty acids. Later on, we're going to tell you about a really, really interesting source of SCFAs that we talk about all the time, but never once have we said that uh, the benefits of this interesting substance is based on its short-chain fatty acid content. In any case, if, the, if you're dealing with, uh, or you know somebody who's dealing with cancer, you don't necessarily want to use chemotherapy killing cancer cells unless you don't have any other choices. Detoxification, nutrition, oxygenation, these are the standard ways we want to treat all health issues. Now, once a cell turns cancerous, it's a little bit different. It's kind of a genetic switch that has been turned on. But still, nutrition, oxygenation, and detoxification are involved in making the body strong, in making the body healthy. Detoxification is important. We don't, when we talk about detoxification on this program, I'm not really talking about fancy schmancy detox formulas. One of the all time greatest, best, cheapest detox strategies is just simply changing our eating behaviors, making better food choices, exploiting fasting, leveraging caloric restriction, maybe using colonics. These are all things that we can do to detox that don't require any fancy detoxification formulas. Bentonite clay is a wonderful detox substance. Everybody should be doing bentonite clay on a somewhat regular basis. I try to do a, t a teaspoon of bentonite clay once or twice a week. Charcoal can do it. Just charcoal capsules can have a wonderful detox, a detoxification of, uh, property using a couple of charcoal capsules every day. Proper exhalation is important for detox. Chelation therapy is a wonderful way to detox. In a study that was published in the Journal of Environmental, of, uh, uh, the Journal of Environmental International in 1980, I think that's the name of the journal, uh, they found that chelation therapy reduced the cancer rate, uh, reduced cancer, as well as overall disease rate in susceptible patients by up to 90% chelation therapy. You can have a intravenous chelation therapy done. You could do oral chelation therapy. Short-chain fatty acids can also have anti-cancer properties and detoxification properties. Butyric acid, that's the SCFA that most of the research has been done on. That's been shown to slow down the beginnings of cancer in a study that was published in the journal Gastroenterology almost 20 years ago, back in 1996. Animals who had tumors, who had uh, chemically induced tumors in the colon, had a reduction in the size and the number of their tumors when they were treated with butyric acid enemas twice a day for eight weeks. All of this is to say that SCFA, short-chain fatty acids, are important, important, important. And even though you don't hear a lot about them, in my opinion, they can and they should be used as part of an overall dietary strategy for keeping the body healthy and disease-free. So now that we know how important these short-chain fatty acids are and butyric acid, the principal SCFA, the principal short fat, the next question is how do we get more of it? How do we make more of it? How do we get more short-chain fatty acids? How do we get more short fats into our systems? Well, first of all, think fiber especially something called resistant fiber or resistant starch. Resistant fiber, resistant starch is a special kind of fiber that makes it through the small intestine and goes into the large intestine intact where it can provide a food source, or as they say in, in the scientific world, it can provide a substrate, something for the bacteria to munch on, something for the bacteria to eat on so that they can secrete their short fats. Butyric acid is one of those short fats that gets secreted from bacteria as they eat on, as they eat the fiber. 
It's this reaction between fiber and bacteria that live in the large intestine. And this is the reason why you want to make sure you're eating, or one of the reasons anyway, why you want to make sure you're eating lots and lots and lots of veggies, lots of fiber, and lots of fermented veggies, and why you want to be on a good probiotic supplement like the Biolumin Nightly Essence every day, taking it on a daily basis. If you grind up uh, celery and spinach and lettuce and a Vitamix and maybe throw in a little bit of beet, you can make a wonderful fiber drink and a fiber and nitrate drink. We haven't finished talking about nitrates. We're going to talk about them some more. Nitrates, as we've been saying in the past, are very important for performance, athletic performance, for energy. They have their own anti-cancer benefits in the combination of nitrates and fiber that you get from, from making a vegetable juice, a celery juice, uh, celery and cucumber juice can really, really upregulate your short-chain fatty acid, your bacteria acid, your nitrates, and the combination will get you a lot more energy than you would think that you would get from just a vegetable juice. Just some celery and cucumber and water and salt is one of the most energizing drinks you could ever make. If you get all the fiber now, now I'm not talking about a juicer. Juicers, you lose that fiber. But if you get a Vitamix or a high-powered blender that keeps the fiber, helps you maintain the fiber, a vegetable juice, just something like celery and cucumber in water can be incredibly filling, incredibly satisfying, incredibly energizing, and incredibly, incredibly good for you, even though it doesn't seem like there's much there. And by the way, if you have salt and spices in with your with your celery and cucumber, it is super tasty. And if you throw just a tiny little bit of onion and a tiny little bit of beet in there, it is just the most unbelievably delicious drink you could ever use. And it's super filling. It's great if you're trying to fast or go into caloric restriction or lose weight. Great for losing weight. All right, got way more to say about butyric acid and short-chain fatty acids tomorrow. Uh, we'll continue talking a little bit more about cancer, and then we'll talk about the very interesting diet that a guy named Hippocrates came up with back in the 4th century before Christ. And it's a uh, diet that we can still use today to improve health, to fight cancer, and also is related to short-chain fatty acids. We'll talk about that tomorrow. On the Bright Side, time to hit our phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to get on board, if you've got questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to uh, the UK and talk to Billy. What's up, Billy? How you doing across the pond there in England? Hello, pharmacies and Ben. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Good to talk to you. How's it going? What can we help you with today? Uh, my problem is um, I've took a pro hormone. It's called uh, M1T uh, Metal 1 Testosterone. I took okay. it for about a week, uh, 10, 10 mg, just a pill a day. But what I've noticed is um, later on, like about six months later from now, um, what happened was I've got, I've got kind of puffy nipples and uh, also I've got low testosterone. And, you got, uh, I don't know uh, hang, hang on, Billy. I'm having a little bit of a hard time understanding you. You're saying you have low testosterone? Is that what I heard you say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want some? You want some ideas for building testosterone? Uh, yeah. Okay. Good deal. How old are you, Billy? I'm 22. 22, and you have low T? Yeah. Okay. Well, then there's something percolating because at 22 you should be. Oh, 32. Did you say 32, Billy? 22, 22. 22. Okay, yeah. At 22, you should definitely not be dealing with low T. So some, something is percolating along in there. Hang tight. we got to take a break, and I'll give you some, uh, some of my thoughts on low T here when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Billy in the U.K. about testosterone. Billy, you there, my man? Billy, Billy, Billy in the UK. We got Billy or we lose Billy? Uh, uh, Billy, you there, man? I don't hear Billy. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay, Billy. Here's a couple things for low T, all right? Uh, I'm going to give you my four major reasons why people have low testosterone. And by the way, at the age of 22, that's way too young to be dealing with this kind of issue. Uh, first of all, the, uh, when you have low testosterone, you want to consider uh, problems with body fat 
uh, female hormone, estrogen is, uh, opposes testosterone. And I don't want to say female hormone necessarily because men make estrogen and women make testosterone. But in the vernacular, they call it female hormone, and that's made in body fat. So the more body fat you're carrying, the uh, more difficult it's going to be uh, to get uh, the benefits of testosterone. You're going, to be, you're going to be antagonizing your male hormone with body fat. So losing body fat is very important, not just for Billy, by the way, but for older folks, older men especially who tend to carry more body fat. That's going to make it difficult to get the benefits of testosterone. So losing body fat is the first thing that you want to do. And that leads to the second thing that you want to do, which is resistance training. The more muscle mass you have, the more weightlifting you're doing or resistance training you're doing, the easier it's going to be for your body to make uh, male hormones. So doing some kind of weightlifting. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You don't need to go to a gym or anything, but just some kind of resistance training. Even pushing against a wall uh, can act as resistance training. You can use, uh, you can get a couple of five or ten pound dumbbells you can use at home. You can just lift, uh, lift a box with heavy books. If you do it slowly, that's the key to resistance training. You always want to move your muscles very slowly. And that way you can exploit uh, he any kind of heavy weight to get some uh, muscle building benefits and that will help. So losing body fat, number one. One, a resistance training number two, and that also leads to our third uh, element when it comes to building testosterone, and that's sugar. Uh, sugar and insulin together will both uh, suppress or antagonize male hormone or testosterone, so reducing your intake of sugar and increasing protein. Uh, reducing sugar and increasing protein kind of go hand in hand. Re uh, eating more protein is a great way to reduce sugar. There's a, a particularly helpful amino acid called glutamine. We've talked about that in the past, and that's a muscle building amino acid. It's a brain health amino acid, it's an immune system amino acid, and it's also an amino acid that can help you withstand sugar cravings. So a teaspoon of glutamine or half a teaspoon of glutamine every day or twice a day uh, can be helpful, and that will uh, not only uh, be helpful for sugar, uh, for your sugar cravings, but it'll also help you build muscle if you're doing your resistance training. And then last, but most certainly not least, malabsorption and nutrition will also antagonize, test uh, or malnutrition will also antagonize uh, testosterone. And along with this malabsorption and nutrition element is uh, uh, leaky gut syndrome or problems with toxicity or something getting into your system that's activating your immune system. When the immune system is activated or when the stress system is activated, that will also suppress testosterone. Uh, so making sure that you ha you're supporting your digestive health, using the probiotics, the bioluminescent nightly essence, and then getting some good building nutrients. Protein, of course, that goes without saying. Everybody knows about protein for, for building uh, testosterone and building muscle. But also zinc is very important. Uh, 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate can help. Magnesium is also important. Uh, maybe 2,000 milligrams of magnesium. Get on the Healthy Start Pack. That'll get you your magnesium. Uh, and then you might want to throw in a little bit of extra zinc. Vitamin E can help. Maybe uh, 400 international units of vitamin E. And then all your sugar control nutrients, including chromium and vanadium and the B complex, uh, is going to be important. That means the Healthy Start Pack, the Sweeties, and then uh, you might also want to consider the Biolumin Nightly Essence to protect your to protect the digestive tract. And then uh, the glutamine powder will also help with malabsorption. That actually can help, uh, help protect the cells of the small intestine to keep things from leaking into the blood, glutamine powder. Lots of great ideas there. Uh, lose some body fat if you have body fat, resistance training, malabsorption, uh, nutrition, make sure you're getting your basic nutrients, and then restricting your intake of sugar. Got a bunch of calls here, Billy. Is there anything else you want to say? What about uh, something called aromatization? Uh, you know, I, you know, aromatase inhibitors, in my opinion, they don't do too much. They're for bodybuilders and weightlifters who really want to get every single angle, um, um, dot every single I, and cross every single T. But they're really the last. They're, they, they follow aromatase inhibitors. Follow uh, all the steps that I just told you about losing body fat and uh, sugar and uh, nutrition malabsorption and resistance training. Once you get all those, once you dot all those I's, then you may want to go into some aromatase inhibitors, uh, but for now, uh, first steps, that, that's a last step. The first steps are resistance training, nutrition, slash malabsorption, restricting sugar, and losing body fat, and that's for all low T issues. Okay, got to move on, Billy. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it, and thanks for listening in the UK. Let's go to Tennessee and welcome Nancy to the bright side. What's up? How you doing, Nancy? Hi, pretty good. Um, talking about my grandbaby, Ben, again. Okay. Um, we have done your, we've followed your, you know, your suggestions, food diary. We've got him on probiotics. 
Um, she finally has pretty much narrowed it down to sugar. Okay. And he, what kind he of sugar? Is, knows, it, is it fruit, well, fruit sugar? Fruit, fruit sugar? Fructose? Fruit. Or? Anytime he eats fruit, he okay. gets a breakout. Okay, and got it. he loves fruit, of course, and we've course. already taken so much away, grain and cheese and, you know, things that he's pretty much just eating vegetables and chicken and uh, fruit. And so I'm wondering if there is now a supplement that we can give him to help him process the fruit. Uh, the, well, yeah, yeah. There's a lot probi. Is he doing? Uh, you're, he's doing probiotics, correct? He is. Yes. Okay. Here's the thing with fructose. Uh, fructose, uh, fruit sugar. Uh, uh, if you have a problem with fructose, and many people do, that's going to cause pr uh, zinc deficiencies. And zinc is an extremely, extremely important mineral for uh, babies, and it's also very important for the skin. Uh, so there's an antagonistic relay. If you have a fructose malabsorption problem, many people do. There's an antagonistic relationship between malabsorption of fructose and uh, zinc. So you're going to want to make sure that he's doing some kind of zinc. How old's your baby? How old's the grandbaby? He's two. Just two. Oh, he's two. Uh, hmm. He's not supplement. I don't. You know, I don't know. A two-year, two-year-old kids. I don't usually recommend the two-year-old supplement. I take it he's not breastfeeding. Is that correct? He's pretty much weaning down now. Okay, well, then, then have mom. Make sure mom, while she's still breastfeeding, this is a great opportunity for mom to give uh, give uh, little the little Ben uh, nutritional supplements in her breast milk. So using, uh, if mom is, is mom supplementing, I hope she is, or is she not? She is, but not a lot, but she's pregnant okay. now, too, and so he is weaning. He's, he's pretty much weaned. He's pretty much oh. weaned. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah it's it's going to be very difficult uh, if he's weaning. It's going to be very uh, if he's not doing the breast milk. It's going to be very difficult for him to do nutritional supplements. You can get him a little bit of a zinc liquid. They make zinc liquids um, uh, for uh, for adults, but you can give him a small dose of a zinc liquid. That would be very important, and that might help his skin right away. Vitamin A and fructose have an antagonistic relationship, also, and vitamin A is also important for the skin. So you may be dealing with something like a nutritional deficiency. I would consider. Uh, maybe go to your pediatrician, see if you can get a source of vitamin A, a nutritional supplement source of vitamin A, or a nutritional supplement source of zinc, or both, uh, if, if the baby is not if baby is not a breastfeeding. And that would be where I would be focusing more than nutrition to help him handle something his body shouldn't be handling. Fructose is not something uh, that the human body is used to. Fruit sugar, as natural as it sounds, you know, everybody has this warm, fuzzy feeling about fruit, about fruit and, and uh, fruit sugar. But as it turns out, the human body is not designed to handle the kinds of fructose, the amount of fructose that we're getting in, in big, huge apples and big, huge watermelons and honeydews. In, didn't used to be a lot of, uh, there weren't a, a lot of fruits on the African savanna as our bodies were growing up. Today, through genetic modification, we've got these fruits that are so filled with fructose, the body doesn't know what to do with them. So I'd be looking at vitamin A and I'd be looking at zinc, see if you can get a liquid source of those uh, for the baby. And uh, thanks for your call. Appreciate it, Nancy. Hope we helped you out. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Nancy, if you're still listening, uh, more protein can also help. Uh, if, and that helps anybody who's dealing with sugar cravings. We talked about glutamine with our friend from, from England uh, just a few moments ago. Glutamine is an amino acid that is found in high-protein foods. And high-protein foods in general are a great way to wean yourself off of sugar. Little kids are especially prone to sugar cravings because their protein needs are so high. And, and most kids aren't getting enough protein. Uh, protein foods are more expensive or, than, than other foods, and, and uh, it's hard to maintain the protein value of foods, especially if you're cooking. So it's very common. It's not, it's not a rare thing for kids to be protein deficient, certainly not protein deficient like uh, protein deficiency disease, but still protein deficient enough so to where they're craving sugar, uh, including fruit sugar. And by the way, fruit juice is one of the most awful things that a kid can eat. Now, fruits we talked about before we went to break as being problematic because Today, fruits have been uh, genetically modified over generations. I'm not talking about GMO necessarily, but just genetic modification that has been done over the course of, of generations, decades, uh, centuries really, to make fruits more, uh, more fructose-filled, to make fruits sweeter, because everybody's sweet tastes. Uh, have, people have a much, much, uh, much greater need for the sweet taste than they did uh, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, because we're all getting dumbed down to sugar. 
Uh, but fruit juice, that's a real big problem. And please, parents, don't let your little kids suck on apple juice filled bottles. Oh my God, you can, that's a recipe for disaster. Apple juice and pear juice and fruit juice, even though kids may scream until they get it. Uh, more protein, that's always the way to go if you're trying to get, uh, trying to uh, reduce your intake of sugar, whether you're an adult or whether you are a child. So more protein, vitamin A and zinc also for fructose malabsorption issues, which sounds like your baby's dealing with or your grandbaby he's dealing with. Okay, Brian in North Carolina, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Brian. Hey. Brian? Yeah. Was, hey, I was, just wanted to say thank you for your approach to health. I really thank, appreciate it. Thank you. Um, what's going on? I'm only about 30 years old, and okay. I've been having a lot of trouble with my Achilles tendons. Um, and I was thinking athlete? there's probably a nutritional thing going on there. Are you an athlete? Are you working out, running, doing anything like that? I mean, I get a fair amount of activity, but I don't do anything crazy, no okay. chronic cardio or anything like that. Okay. And how's your weight? Are you gaining weight anywhere? Do you are gaining weight now that you're 30? Are you starting to notice a little, little weight gain that you didn't have before, that kind of thing? I am um, probably heavier than I've ever been. I'm okay. only about 170 pounds. But, but it, you for know. you, that's heavy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a sign that your your blood sugar is starting to get thrown off, and usually that means that there. Once you, if you have blood sugar problems, which are very common, uh, you'll st start to notice that you're gaining weight as you approach your 30s. You know, you may have been skinny your whole life, and then you get to 28, 29, 30, 31. You start to notice a few pounds here and there. It does get worse if you don't do anything about it. Usually, that means there's a blood sugar problem, and then if you have a blood sugar problem, that also means there's a digestive issue. So you probably have both of those things going on: digestive and blood sugar. You may have some other things, but that would be the first thing I would look at. Tendon health and Achilles tendons, uh, Achilles tendon issues, that's, that involves inflammation. Assuming you didn't tear anything or you know wound anything, do something mechanical to it, it usually involves inflammation, and inflammation follows digestive distress, and it can be compounded by blood sugar problems. So those would be the two approaches that I would take. You'll also find that you're losing weight when you take these two approaches, and you'll find that your blood pressure is dropping and your blood fats are improving, and you're actually going to end up living a longer, healthier life by doing these strategies. So here's what you want to do. Step number one, correct any digestive health issues. Do a food diary, look for problem foods, and then eliminate those foods. And then get yourself on the Biolumin Nightly Essence. It doesn't sound like the Biolumin Nightly Essence would necessarily be related to your tendons or improving tendon health. But, they, but it will via this whole short-chain fatty acid subject that we've been talking about by using the probiotics, the Biolumin Nightly Essence, or any probiotics and fermented foods for that matter, along with fiber, making sure you're getting more veggies. That will not only give you better digestive health, but it will also help improve inflammatory symptoms like problems with your Achilles tendon. Then you want to do all the blood sugar things. Chromium and vanadium and the sweeties are very helpful. All the B-complex vitamins are very important for blood sugar control, magnesium, super important mineral for blood sugar control, as is selenium and as is zinc. So you may want to get on the ultimate selenium as well as the healthy start pack and the sweet ease. If you want to do one last thing for inflammation and for blood sugar and for the digestive system, it would be the Fucoidin Z or the Z radical. Some people like the Z radical. It's a little sweeter. Uh, the Fucoidin Z, you get a little more bang for your buck. So either one of those. Uh, digestive system health, probiotics, fiber, um, at caloric restriction also. For all inflammatory issues, caloric restriction and fasting can go a long way towards quieting inflammation. In fact, almost guaranteed that if you restrict your calories or even fast, which is better, you will notice anti-inflammatory benefits in 24 hours, Brian. So that, that'll, take, uh, that'll give you some immediate relief from your tendon, from your tendon problems, but then you're going to want to do all the other long-term things that we just talked about. Don't forget the essential fatty acids in the Healthy Star Pack. Those are also anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats. So you got lots of good good ideas. Uh, if you want to rebuild tendon, which it doesn't sound like you need to do, but for anybody out there listening, think about your glucogel caps and always use vitamin C with your glucogel caps. Does that help you, Brian? Yes. Thank you very good, much. Good deal. Thanks for calling and thanks for the kind words. Appreciate it. Mike in Colorado, welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, bro? Hi. Um, hey. What's going on? How you doing? Uh, well, I just got a question about my neighbor. She, uh, uh, broke her wheel here last winter. You know, she's got a broke her what? Hit now. What her did she wheel break? Wheel in her leg. Oh, her she broke bone. her leg. How old? Older? Oh, she's a little older, eighty-two, and uh, okay. pretty healthy. Okay. That's anyway. That's... Um, I just want to 
I've been telling her how important it is to take uh, calcium st- and stuff like that, you know, but she's just taking, like, calcium carbonate, which I said is zero. Wow. And uh, I know calcium citrate's a good thing to start with, but um, I thought maybe you'd have some more suggestions. Lots, far- lots, lots, lots. Yeah, bone. Okay, good. It's, it's, it's lots of stuff. Uh, bone problems in the elderly are very common. Hip problems are a big problem, yeah. broken hips, broken pelvis. It's very common. Uh, as we get older, we get more brittle, especially after if she's 82. That probably, if she's like most people that's 82 years of mucking up her system so she's got a lot of work to do well uh, calcium is important no doubt about it but it's not as important as protein Uh, and if you if she has problems with her digestive system she's not going to be absorbing her protein chances are she's not even getting enough protein most older folks aren't most younger folks aren't you know (laughs) so what are you going to do get her on the slender fx whey protein if she can handle whey protein and if she can't make sure she uses Whey protein, the Slender FX. Uh, if she yeah. cannot, yeah. if she can't handle protein, or if she feels uncomfortable, have her do smaller doses of the protein, and then have her do her protein with apple cider vinegar, a swig of it, along with the Ultimate Enzymes. And this is for anybody who's trying to get more protein in their system. If you start a protein supplement, uh, if you get yourself on a protein supplement, and you notice that you feel bloated after you use it, or any kind of discomfort, it doesn't necessarily mean you're having a problem with that specific type of protein, like you're allergic to the protein. It could be that you're just not, don't have enough chemistry in your body to metabolize it, to break it down. Uh, and that happens over time. We don't make as much enzymes. We don't make as much stomach acid, et cetera. So have her do uh, protein, smaller amounts, smaller doses, I should say, if she has a problem with it, along with digestive enzymes and uh, the ultimate enzymes in apple cider vinegar. Vitamin C is just as important, if not more important, than calcium for building bone. Anybody dealing with osteoporosis, you should know that osteoporosis or bone problems or broken hips hips, etc., can oftentimes be caused by problems with vitamin C or deficiencies in vitamin C. The bone is connective tissue. And without vitamin C, you ain't making no connective tissue, period. It doesn't matter how much calcium or protein or anything else you use. If you don't have enough vitamin C, you're not going to make connective tissue effectively, and that means you're not going to make bone effectively. So make sure you're getting enough vitamin C. Of course, that means the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, have her sipping on the BTT. Uh, the whole Healthy Start Pack will go a long way towards well, Helping her re- ascorbic acid. That's fine. Plain ascorbic acid. Okay. With the BTT, you're yeah. going to get the B vitamins. But but yeah, ascorbic acid is good. Or calcium ascorbate you can get too. And that will get her calcium plus her vitamin C. Essential fatty calcium acids are... Okay. Yes, calcium ascorbate. That's a blend of calcium and vitamin C. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah, cal- calcium ascorbate or magnesium ascorbate or mineral oh, ascorbates. Okay. You can get a blend of mineral ascorbates. Potassium ascorbate, zinc ascorbate. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a product called Ester C, which is a brand name, but you can get mineral ascorbates yeah. generically, and that can help too. Well, I've been uh, buying, I buy that C just in bulk, you know, and I've been taking it in pretty big doses myself. But which one, the ascorbic acid? acid? Yeah, just ascorbic acid. Do you notice it you know, messes like up that. your digestive system at all? Do you have any gas? No, or no, I just I make a sodium ascorbate. You know, I mix it with uh, bicarbonate soda. Wow, it. sounds like you know what you're doing there, Mike in Colorado. Well, have we met? Have you and I met? Well, I talked to you once before. I live up in Netherlands. Uh, okay, good. I, I got to move that. That's the music, my friend. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. I'm sorry if we left you on hold. Please call back tomorrow and tell our call screener that you're on hold. We'll get your first stop. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out my blog, Brightside ben, uh, PharmacistBen.com, and you can sign up for the Brightside Ben team right off the blog, PharmacistBen.com, or call the Brightside Ben phone team, 866-735-2470. Thanks for listening, friends. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. Bye for now.